Red and Roses is an organization that is dedicated to celebrating the lives of workers and their families through arts and humanities events. We produce theater. We have done art exhibits that are labor-oriented. We've commissioned new plays. All the work we do supports and celebrates the lives of workers. We are a pro-labor organization. I'm retired. Yeah, I was a, uh, a butcher for Schnooks for 26 years. Then they changed our name to Meat Cutters. Uh, I was a uh, organizer and a union rep. And later I became secretary treasurer of the local. I work for a major telecommunications company. I'm a chief steward. I'm the chair of organizing. I also serve on the uh, legislative board, the building committee. So I, I keep pretty active. I work for the Home Depot. I've uh, been there eight years. And uh, prior to that, I worked at a, a chocolate candy company for almost 30 years. Um, I'm not a student anymore. I went to my first year and it, it didn't feel right and I don't want to go in debt about something I'm, I uh, am not, you know, 100% committed to. So um, I just got into the uh, workforce full time and I actually just, uh, just worked my last shift at um, a, a food service uh, fast food chain and I'm now going to be a pharmacy technician. I am a labor liaison of the major nonprofit. I work at Five Guys in West County Mall. Uh, I do everything. I cook the burgers, I take orders, I clean the back, I clean the lobby, I clean the fryers, I cook the fries, we, we prep the vegetables, you know, I do everything. I work for Missouri Department of Transportation, which is actually uh, MoDOT. Been with MoDOT for 10 years. I'm retired. I, yes. When did you retire to education? Uh, education. Uh, the last piece was Parkway School District. And um, I drove a school bus. Um, and uh, yeah, but I actually had to retire early for health reasons. Well, I hope the audience get the understanding of what we're trying to tell them and bring to them because a lot of people really don't understand what's going on and we just trying to put this play together then present it to them and make sure that they understand and I'm hoping and praying that they really do understand what we're talking about. The, the biggest challenge is that I'm working with non-actors. These are all workers. These are people everyday working class people and that's what the whole point of the show is is to, to talk about what, what's important to them because so many of the people in the country, in the world, are what we would call working class. Most of the time you only have four weeks to put up a show, but in that four weeks you already have the, the script done. So this extra two weeks is getting the script done. Because we're in this writing process, um, I haven't had a lot of time to direct, direct, um, but I'm looking forward to working with them next week um, when, we, when we'll have a script and I can start putting them on their feet. What are the things that are resonating with you most about your work or labor today in our region? So $15 an hour probably sounds good to them, but then you're actually, since you're short staff, you know, uh, you're doing the job of two or three. What was uh, the three piece that Sonia said, policy over profit over people? people? people. Yeah. The purpose of them um, writing right now, they made scenes yesterday. Um, they started to write about a relationship, whether maybe that's an employee and a manager, or that's two coworkers, or it's a customer and an employee, but something that um, reflects one of the stories that we've already talked about in here. They're starting to put it into dialogue. We're able to share some questions and some feedback um, so what they're taking is they're incorporating that feedback to uh, flesh out the scene, develop it a little bit more, and then the next thing we're going to be doing is writing the second scene for those two characters. For instance, I got a neighbor that retired two years ago as a federal government worker. He was in the American Federation of Government Employees Union. He gets a $3,200 a month pension and he gets a $1,900 a month Social Security check, 
and him and I go out to eat about every two weeks together. First thing he starts on is what he always starts on. Look at the, they're paying $15 an hour and the lady says they can't get any help here. You think $15 an hour, you know, is a great job for, he said, well, yeah, they can make 600 a week. I said, first of all, they're not full-time jobs. If they are lucky enough to get 40 hours, 40 times 15 is 600 hours. You retired at $98,000 a year. Would you work for 600 a week? There were some really wonderful narratives that people were telling about their work and, and moments um, that really shaped their values in their job or that really speak to some of the challenges in work right now. Um, and I've encouraged them to draw from those to create the scenes. So right now, she's gonna give them a writing prompt and they're just gonna write about it like they did last night. They had a writing prompt um, and it was about, does money make you happy? Could you to take the next eight minutes that we have okay. and try and write yours separately? Okay. So not okay. cheating off each other's papers. Okay. I just wanna know what, what you would say uh, and what you would say. Okay, okay, yeah? okay, 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 that's good. Okay. If he said yes, mm -hmm. he said because I said yes and no. It yes, makes money. me happy to buy nice clothes, to be able to buy my wife a nice dress, you know, happy yeah. wife, happy life. And so he said yes. 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 And so but then I asked him, yes, if we didn't have any money, would we be happy? And he said no. Of course not. Mm. So he was explaining to me. <laughs> of course not. So I said, you know, this would be interesting that we would be together writing this thing, you know. So I'm interested to see. You go if ahead you and write to, yours, and I'm going to write mine. Money. Well, you write it. You write it down, and then we'll find out. This scene is actually uh, what happened to me at work literally yesterday morning. Uh, I looked at my information and I discovered that uh, I didn't get a raise that my boss told me that I was going to get previously. So um, he, uh, I confronted him about it and there just happened to be co-workers around. And uh, he tried to take the conversation private and I was like, I'm right here. You know, uh, I want to talk about it right now. Like, where's my raise? You said this, but nothing came from it. And how are you contributing to this thing? Oh, well, I'm the, uh, the manager that he's confronting about the raise. So he the employee, I'm the manager, and uh, I'm trying to brush him off because he know he's not supposed to talk about wages in front of his co-workers. She'll take that information and then she'll find ways to incorporate it in as we're building as as we're building the script. With the goal of the entire piece being um, being focused on the narratives of these people in this room and how we're able to share it out with an audience in a personal storytelling way. How does all of this help you in terms of developing music? Uh, just good to see how people. Not so much what they're saying, though that is important too, but just how people are, how they're interacting, thinking about how we can build that into some musical activities or musical numbers. Then uh, I'll get to know more once I talk to everyone, see where they're at, see what kind of music they're into, or if they like to sing or play anything. But right now I'm like just keeping my ears wide open, just trying to get oriented with the, the show. It's my first time doing it, so. We need to figure out what's the scene before. Yeah, the so other we, thing is, I was just thinking, this is before feud, right? So if we want to get it from uh, off stage, uh, oh, you can't put the baby in the box with this plastic in the box. <laughs> baby was in the box before you got here naked and, 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 and afraid. Stop it, man. Stop it. Stop it. We got a, there's gonna be like three songs in the play and we've been mostly working on those so far. But as the script has come together, we have some like commercials and talk shows and stuff. So there's gonna be lots of little jingles and themes I'm excited about. And today we're gonna to try, there's two, some long like rap verses on our version of Pastime Paradise that are gonna be really cool. If I can get, uh, if I can get someone to do them. <laughs> the bridges are new. Uh, the bridge is the tell me why, oh why part. 
realize. I'll sing it with you, so we'll get there. So, we have a script that is, um, that, you know, needs just a few more pieces, and one of those pieces is an ending. And so the question that I asked the whole group to discuss is um, going to make its way, their answers are going to make its way into an ending, because I'd love to leave the audience with a dream of what work and life could look like. Um, and so I wanted to hear about their ideal so that what I can write is a monologue, a shared monologue of the group at the end to speak to what that life could look like, what that dream could look like. Been working most of our lives, sleeping for the boss man's paradise. Why, oh why, don't we realize that you as the stage manager, it's my job to um, make sure everyone is here, ready to work. So, you know, I'm the attendance taker and then the record keeper. I send reports to the staff members who aren't here, like the executive director of the organization. Uh, and then as we develop the script, I'll be the one keeping track of the blocking, the changes to the script. Um, as the actors start to memorize it, and they call for line. I'm the one who will give them their line. If you live in a non-designated flood zone, your line. It doesn't do a thing for your lost property. It does not do a thing for your lost property. I am also just generally kind of the right hand person for the directors. So um, anything that they need in order to facilitate the process. It's just really the people that you're managing, you know, to make the process go smoothly. You know what time it is? Our studio audience and our audience at home. It's time to play Workers View! Good job on the, on the Workers Feud! You came in when you were supposed to come in? Sonya came in? Yes, so the workers' feud was looking really good. And I know that it's a long scene, but it looks really good. We're going into the theater for the first time to look at where we'll be performing. We're right in front of it now, and everyone's very anxious to get in there and see what kind of space we're working with, so it'll help Mariah in rehearsal. And we're also planning an event for opening night next door for some donors and supporters. And then we're going to have a party after for the cast, too. <laughs> But again, who's running everything? Well, right. right. I mean, we don't have a we don't have a designer. Okay. For that. Natural. The good thing about the wall is we project. If we can project, then we only have a curtain. So we still need a wall. Okay, great. Because that could help too. I'm gonna be in favor of, with her backdrop, whatever she makes of it being um, not hung, so it could be tourable if right. they yes. have to show right. somewhere else. So the stage is 18 by 18. Right. Thank There's you. There's two exits for the exit building. Okay. We got flooded out, so. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Oh. Twice in a week. So we lost just about everything down there, but it's all cleaned up now. And behind there's a full tech booth with sound through the two PBs in the grid. Gotcha. If you want to do more than that, uh, there is a snake backstage cool. that you could mess with. It's not in great shape. It's about 16 years old and it's been stepped on and kicked around. <laughs> gotcha. You'll find a channel or two that'll work. All right. Uh, I can send you the most current lighting design so you can see what's up in the air. With you doing all of that, but it's, you know, I mean, I don't think you would need me to cue you. We'll know where it is. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because it'll be 
right there. So I'm hoping that Brittany will be able to handle, you know, help with that because like those ones on the stage, as he said, we're gonna need um, a, the ladder to pull them, you know, in order to get up and focus them. Those lights were on already, right? From the booth, I think they were. Yeah. They'll look here too. Scary over here. Now that I've seen the space, now I can figure out how I'm gonna move actors around. And uh, it's a pretty small space and I'm worried also that we have a few steps in the back, uh, backstage, um, we have some um, over retirement age in our cast, so I gotta make sure that I don't have them falling downstairs, so I'm gonna have to think about keeping them all on the set at the same time and how I move them and in and out of scenes as opposed to moving them in and off the stage, off the stage and onto the stage. I'm thinking about space, so where do I go? Um, and then thinking about how it sounds like how alive or reverberant the sound is and it's pretty dead which is good that's better for like everyone being intelligible when we're singing and for the music not kind of booming around and making a messy sound so it's good it's going to be good for me and also i have a musician that i got to put up here too so um I just want to make it interesting and don't feel like they're just sitting there, um, but also be an active part of whatever the scene is at the moment. Today we're at the Missouri History Museum and we're going to get a chance to have an audience see what we've been doing. Um, of course, we're still in rehearsals. We have another week and of rehearsals and another week of tech, but this gives us an opportunity to show, showcase some of the show. And so today we're going to do the prologue and we're going to have um, a monologue and we're going to have some singing. We have no idea who's gonna be here. We have no idea um, if it's gonna be a young audience or an older audience, but it's nice to have an audience and, and get the, the cast ready to be doing this in two weeks. Okay, this is David. David, this is Matt Pace, he's our music director. funded through a variety of sources. We get um, money from the Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis, Arts and Education Council, some other private foundations. We're also supported by a lot of individual donations as well. So, and then some amount of earned income for art projects we do or things people pay us to show up for. <laughs> and when you get up in front of that audience, don't, if you make a mistake, it's okay because I know what the story is that you were just telling me. So there might be people walking in and walking out. Don't let that distract you. Just, just stay focused and just tell the story to whoever's sitting there. If it's just me, well, I won't be there. If it's just Sarah and Emily sitting there, just tell them the story. The prologue is just an overview of the play itself, and we're discussing the history of St. Louis. And so this gives everybody the opportunity to kind of get acquainted with our idea of St. Louis history. And we tell that story about the general strike of 1877. Oh yeah, I love this stuff. I can't wait. This is my first performance, and I'm feeling really good about it. Truly blown away. You guys did an amazing job. That was wonderful. My own kids were in the audience and really enjoyed it. So on behalf of the families that were here and the guests that were here, that was that was informative. It was compelling. One, two, three, smile. Yeah. Well, video thoughts? First time. <laughs> no. No. That's it. That's all I need. That's all I need. There are some thoughts directors don't There's share publicly. <laughs> She knows better.
Well, tonight was supposed to be our first night in the theater with the cast, but sometimes there are hiccups and we had a hiccup. So the space was double booked and we had a miscommunication. So um, we had to pivot and we packed up all of the furniture that we brought over to the space, put it back in our vehicles and came back to the church. Unfortunately, the church has been so kind to us and they let us um, come back. We have a lot of things to do tonight. You know, our plans have changed a bit, so we want to talk about that. Our plan for this evening, our plan for the week, um, and then we're going to get to it. You can see we have a lot of new things in the room, furniture, we've got some hand props. So tonight we're going to be sorting out um, all of the details and logistics pertaining to those, where they come from, where they go to, that sort of thing, okay? This is the last time we will be uh, rehearsing at a uh, the Unitarian Church, and after this we've got Tech Week, which if you're not in the industry, some of us call it Hell Week. We're really all putting the work in, and I really I really love my cast members, so it's gonna be great. So Don, you know where that your chair's going? Okay, John, do you know where your chair is? Thank you. All right, let's go. Lights up. Make sure you're speaking to each other. The biggest challenge today is just trying to figure out how to um, place everything on the stage. And with the actors in mind, the space feels a lot smaller than what we've been working in. I'm going to put this there. behind that. This? Yeah, I'm going to put it behind that. Okay. Well, no, I don't, I don't need to shift it this way. I need to shift it that way. And hey, Grace, would you like to look at your cue for the interviews? Grace. Emily. Okay, great. Yeah. So, can you look at this and see if it needs to come down anymore? I mean, you have room to come down as far as you want to. You got it. So, um, there is only really the one entrance exit to the space for the audience as well as Hots coming in through that through the box office. It's going to feel tight. We've got a lot to do and a lot of things in the space already. We had to make a decision to, um, move the, the the actors onto the stage from the front of the house as opposed to the back of the house because it really isn't safe back there and there's really not a lot of room back there. Brittany will cue you when it's time to be in places which means you will line up in your order with your furniture items and you have props you know that you need to have in your pockets and stuff. Stack that, stack that one uh -huh. on that one and stack, and stack, the other, stack it on the other one. Oh and yeah? Then just okay, move this just keep this over. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I All think right. you can be the stool stacker. I would love to be the stool stacker. Feels like my destiny. And the baby is always going to have to come from up left here. We could actually also have someone on the balcony throw the baby to Monica. She football catches it and then, yeah. and then court performing. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to do like hash marks across the top but here I at the edge of the stage. Solid one right here at the step, yes. so you know that where it's. And then once it starts the dots, there aren't any steps there. So I think that we have it all worked out where everybody's going to be safe. Everything that we need in terms of props are going to be um, able to be um, accessed. And also that um, there'll be space for the actors to move around. Here, you are here. This is the space that the magic's going to happen, right? The more acclimated you get to this space, the better, right? We've been working in a space for the past five years. We've just rolled with a lot of punches the last couple of days and solved a lot of problems and we're getting through it. And this is always the hardest part is when you make that transition from rehearsal into performance. So, um, but I mean, these guys are, you know, they are professionals. They've been working as professionals for seven weeks now. So I think they're going to be ready to do this. And I just, a lot of my hard work is done. I just have to sit back and watch them shine. Three, yes. 